teaching you about the initialize and declare section and even the input parameters because they're very handy for the next topic of the day, which is monochromators. Here, of course, we have to angle them, like here to angle the mirror, uh, and we also need to, to specify a wavelength uh, that we wish to use and calculate the angle. And that's one of the main benefits uh, of MaxDAS, that you can embed all of this code to make all of these decisions based on your input. So now let's look at the, how monochromators are simulated in MaxDAS so that you can insert one in your instrument that you've been working with. First, a quick overview. We'll talk about quickly the purpose, then the MaxDAS implementation and uh, some advice in, in how to use it. Then uh, an overview of some of the most popular components and then we'll get right back to your exercise. Of course, the purpose of the uh, monochromator is to select a wavelength, uh, and of course this happens with Bragg's law. But we also have the uh, annoying part here with the, the higher orders uh, are affected. And this is also stipulated in some access components. And uh, a common thing to investigate is how this higher order can uh, influence your instrument and uh, if, if you can avoid it. So the most basic monochromator we have is called uh, just monochromator flat. So it's just a 2D thing. It has no thickness. There's no actual physics simulation of any uh, um, single crystal. It's just a single scattering vector that you can define either as a Q vector or as a lattice spacing. And of course, then the Q is discaturated. Uh, standard is an orientation in the Y Z plane, so that a rotation along the, the Y axis corresponds to theta. No extra 90 degree rotation necessary. You can also provide it with a mosaicity of the crystal and the maximum reflectivity, which is that taken into account. It's quite a limited in functionality as it does not simulate the higher orders, but then again, it's very easy to use and, of course, computationally fast. So, how do you insert one of these in your instrument file? Um, of course, I would, we recommend setting an R and then setting your monochromator relative to that. Or but here I just set it directly relative to the source with my theta as a rotation. Then if I, if I set the monitor relative to the monochromator, I set it directly in line like this. And then many neutrons will, most neutrons that are properly reflected will actually miss my monitor because I forgot to set it up to theta. And for this, it's nice to have the extra arm that you can then rotate another angle of theta. And of course, you should take the monitor relative to that arm instead. Now we're in the beam direction and we will receive the uh, neutrons from the north mirror. So if you see an empty monitor, you probably made this mistake. Here's a typical beam from uh, a flat monochromator. We see uh, a, um, a soft beam, so to say. Uh, it, it has um, more or less the same spatial characteristic as uh, is left because it's basically like a mirror, but only selects the one wavelength. In divergence, we have some jump changes because the divergence is directly dependent on the mosaicity of the monochromator. And then here I try to plot the wavelength, but well, it's hard to see on the screen. Of course, we have some distribution of wavelengths around the selected wavelength, again because of the mosaicity. So in this way, the divergence and the wavelength distribution are connected. And another thing that's connected is the divergence and energy. So 
on the x-axis here, we have uh, the position away from the monochromator, and then here is the energy. And we see that the uh, energy range that is uh, scattered has a correlation with the position at this distance. Because, of course, if you have a little more divergence to one side, then Bragg's law sees that as a higher theta, and you get a different energy. And this correlation is very important for the resolution function of an instrument. Next is the uh, monochromator curve. And it is a uh, curve, but from several flat segments. So here we have three horizontal and three vertical, and you would set the height and set width of each of these segments, and then a gap as how much space there's in between them. But I would actually also use this component to just simulate a single flat monochromator because it does simulate higher order scattering. So you see the contamination from the higher order. But it still does not do any actual physics simulation. It still has just an input of either the scattering vector or your D spacing. It still has the advantage that it's very easy to use. You can adjust the, uh, the focusing and how many pieces of crystals all in one component. Very simple. And let's take a quick look on the usual output of this component. Here I selected five vertical uh, uh, column of five crystals. So we get um, divergence from five different crystals. The top and the bottom is cut off a little bit because of, of the guide height. We also get a different spatial distribution because we are now focusing on our sample so we can get a tighter beam than our guide delivers. And we still have the correlations with energy, so I don't show them energy divergence. But now we also have the higher order of uh, wavelength that we probably don't want in our instrument, but should simulate in order to see what's going on. And then a special mention goes out to uh, the signal crystal component, which can also kind of be used as a monochromator component, but it's much more difficult to use because this is an actual diffraction sample, uh, and so it, it has uh, a depth, and this depth will influence your transmission and reflectivity. It also has all the mosaicity options that you would want. So you can use this as a monochromator, but it's much more difficult to use, especially if you want to make a focusing monochromator where you use many of these, and it's also a slower uh, computation speed. And you, But then again, you get all the other reflections. Maybe uh, you want to investigate if some other reflection in your monochromator could become an issue, you can use the single crystal and get a full physics simulation of the single crystal scatter. And um, we will go more in depth with the, the sample in tomorrow's section on diffraction time. And that was this very quick talk on monochromators. Now it's time to insert one in your instrument and use both the input parameter, declare section, and initialize in order to select the wavelength you wish from the uh, monochromator. And use these parameters as input in your components to make it easy to use and you don't have to change the same variable many places in order to get the correct image.